Nissan has made a modern Skyline Nismo with only four doors, just for Japan. The Quest 3's launch date has been leaked. There's a sneak peek of what the new IndyCar hybrid drivetrain will sound like in 2024. A new Ferrari movie is coming out, the trailer just dropped. And there's brand new F1 drama about flexi wings. That and more in today's episode of ECU. The Nissan Skyline Nismo debuted this month in Japan. The Nissan has up to 414 horsepower and there will only be a thousand made. It should range from $54,000 to $66,000. That's about 9 million yen. And it should go on sale this next month or basically tomorrow. <laughs> If you can't tell, this is based on the Infiniti Q50. The largest difference is visually being a new front end and a special Enki wheels. Like I said, it'll be a Japan release only, so we just have to wait two decades before there's even a hope of seeing one here in the States. Frankly, I'm just wondering how many people are gonna mod their Q50s to actually <laughs> look like this. The Quest 3 has had a leak that anyone with a sim rig should pay attention to, and that would be the release date. So its release date window is set for September 27th at the Meta Connect event. Price is expected to be $500. The Quest 3 is a big jump forward compared to its predecessors because it's a mixed reality headset, and it's going to be a lot more powerful than the Quest 2 with a focus on productivity and work as opposed to gaming as much as the previous ones were. That shouldn't change anything too much just because it's a better headset, so it should be good for sim racing. Fingers crossed, I'm going to be getting one and going live with it, so subscribe if you want to get updates this fall. An Amazon page accidentally leaked its release date is October 10th, so we finally have a set date that it should be available to buy. I say we should be excited by this because we finally have a timeline. I've had the original Quest for a while now, and being into sim racing, that original Quest really is not the headset that you want. So I'm excited and I'm looking forward to it. It should be lighter and way more advanced, so it's going to be a big game changer. I'll keep everyone up to date on that because I'll be getting one and we'll be sim racing with it, so I will let you know how that is. The IndyCar Series is going to debut a new hybrid engine powertrain in 2024. This is going to be a 2.4 liter V6 twin turbocharged hybrid engine going to be using the electrical power generated through braking to give the driver 150 horsepower for push to pass. It'll probably be most effective on oval tracks. The Indy series recently completed the first and final major test of the hybrid engine. One good thing about the new unit is that the sound of the cars have not drastically changed. When we talk about hybrids, I'm sure some people get a little tense as some of the best sounding race cars sounded worse and more boring as compared to their internal combustion engine counterparts from previous years. Not here, take a listen. for the 2023 movie Ferrari is on YouTube now. I just saw this like an hour ago. It has Adam Driver, Penelope Cruz, and Shade Chidlene Woodley. I'll be honest, I'm not a big actor guy. I only know Adam Driver. The movie should have a release date of December 25th this year. And honestly, I watched the trailer and I, I guess I'm excited for it. There was almost no dialogue, which I think is smart on the behalf of whoever made the trailer. Lots of cool visuals and mostly cool sounds. I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see what the movie's like. I don't know, I didn't expect this at all, to be honest. This is kind of coming out of left field. So I guess I'm excited for it. I have no reason <laughs> not to be. So I guess I'll see it in December and I'll let you know then. The FIA has issued a new technical directive for F1 teams due to suspicions of them using flexible bodywork known as flexi wings in order to gain aerodynamic advantages. This issue has been ongoing as teams try to exploit loopholes and regulations to make their front and rear wing elements more flexible. The FIA aims to address this by introducing further regulations to prevent this flexibility. Teams were informed of these measures before for the Dutch Grand Prix, and they now have to ensure their front and rear wings comply with the new rules. The deadline for this compliance is going to be September 8th, so pretty soon here, and the new designs are going to be required at the Singapore Grand Prix and onward. This follows concerns expressed by the FAA's senior race director advisor about the flexibility of wing elements and the difficulty of regulating them. The upcoming Italian Grand Prix will be the last race where teams can use their current designs before the new regulations take effect. Here's a short video kind of showing you what this flexibility looks like. I would have to assume as far as technicalities go, the reason it's hard to regulate is because you're dealing with mechanical stresses with aerodynamics because it's flexing. It's not technically a moving piece, but because it flexes and changes its position depending on the amount of pressure 
that airflow pushes on it. You can see in these short videos here the differences in where it's at depending on the speed. And I, I, I noticed this earlier this year, but I didn't think anything of it. But I guess the FIA thought something of it. This is really fascinating and this is also developing. So if there's anything new about it, I'll be the first to let you know. Let me know what you thought about the Nissan, the Skyline that we will actually never see, the Ferrari movie, the Quest 3, whether or not you would actually be interested in using that in sim racing. Also, I'm I'm happy that the IndyCar powertrain doesn't sound different. I think that's cool. That'll have to be it for this week's episode of ECU. Make sure you subscribe so that you stay up to date on every car update. And I'll see you in the next one.